Hello children, how are you? Good to see you again. Well, today again, the story that I have chosen is about family. Family support, family affection, friendship, the strength and love you get from your family. You can't get it from anywhere else. So how important brothers and sisters and parents are and we should value these relationships. So we start with the story. Did Mama sing every day? asked Callum. Every single day he sat close to the fire, his chin in his hand. It was dusk and the dogs lay beside him on the warm hearthstone. Every single day I told him for the second time this week, for the twentieth time, this month, the hundredth time, this year and the past few years. So they had lost their mother at a very young age. So we are blessed who have our parents and we should value them and respect them. And did Papa sing too? Yes, Papa sang too. Don't get so close, Caleb, you'll heat up. They sh there are the brother and sister, Caleb and the sister and the fire. Okay, so it must be mighty cold there. He pushed his chair back. It made a hollow scraping sound on the hearthstones and the dog stirred. Lottie, small and black, wagged her tail and lifted her head. Nick slept on. I turned the bread dough over and over on the marble slab on the kitchen table. Well, Papa doesn't sing anymore, said Caleb very softly. A log broke apart and crackled in the fireplace. He looked up at me. What did I look like when I was born? You didn't have any clothes on, I told him. I know that, he said. You look like this. I held the bread dough up in a round pale ball. I had hair, said Caleb seriously. Not enough to talk about, I said. And she named me Caleb. He went on filling in the old familiar story. He draws strength by talking about his mum and, and her memories. I would have named you Troublesome, I said, making Caleb smile. And Mama handed me to you in the yellow blanket and said, he wa waited for me to finish the story and said, I sighed. And Mama said, isn't he beautiful, Anna? And I was, I was. Caleb finished. Caleb thought the story was over and I didn't tell him what I had really thought. He was homely and plain and he had a terrible holler and a horrid smell. But these were not the worst of him. Mama died the next morning. That was the worst thing about Caleb. Isn't he beautiful, Anna? Her last words to me. I had gone to bed thinking how wretched he looked and I forgot to say good night. See, this is the memory of the baby. All right. I wiped my hands on my apron and went to the window. Little girl, she's doing the chores, taking the responsibility. What a lovely girl. Outside the prairie, reached out and touched the places where the sky came down. The winter was nearly over. There were patches of snow and ice everywhere. I looked at the long dirty road that crawled across the plains, remembering the morning that Mama had died, cruel and sunny. They had come for her in a wagon and taken her away to be buried. And then the cousins and aunts and uncles had come and tried to fill up the house, but they couldn't. Slowly, one by one, they left, and then the days seemed long and dark, like winter days, even though it wasn't winter, and Papa didn't sing. Isn't he beautiful, Anna? No, Mama. She's having those thoughts in her mind. It was hard to think of Caleb as beautiful. It took three whole days for me to love him, sitting in the chair by the fire, 
Papa washing up the supper dishes, Caleb's tiny hand brushing my cheek. See how many things a mum does? Only when she's not around, you realize the whole family is pitching in to do what she used to do. And the smile, it was the smile, I know. Can you remember her songs? asked Caleb. Mama's songs? I turned from the window. No, only that she sang about flowers and birds, sometimes about the moon at night. Caleb reached down and touched Lottie's head. Maybe he said his voice low. If you remember the songs, then I might remember her too. My eyes widened and tears came. Then the door opened and wind blew in with Papa and I went to stir the stew. Papa put his arms around me and put his nose in my hair. Nice soapy smell that stew, he said. I laughed. That's my hair. Caleb came over and threw his arms around Papa's neck and hung down as Papa swung him back and forth, back and forth, and the dog sat up. Cold in town, said Papa, and Jack was feisty. Jack was Papa's horse that he had raised from a coat. Rascal, murmured Papa, smiling, because no matter what Jack did, Papa loved him. I spooned up the stew and lighted the oil lamp and we ate with the dogs, crowding under the table, hoping for spills or handouts. Our pets do. Papa might not have told us about Sarah that night if Caleb hadn't asked him the question. <coughs> Excuse me. After the dishes were cleared and washed and Papa was filling the tin pail with ashes, Caleb spoke up. It wasn't it, a question really. You don't sing anymore, he said. He said it harshly. Not because he meant to, but because he had been thinking of it for so long. Why? he asked more gently. Slowly, Papa straightened up. There was a long silence and the dogs looked up, wondering at it. I've forgotten the whole song, said Papa quietly. He sat down. But maybe there's a way to remember them. He looked up at us. How? asked Gallup eagerly. Papa leaned back in the chair. I have placed an advertisement in the newspapers for help. I'll be back again.